Breakfast Club, live from Hardy's on Northwest Broad Street in Murfreesboro. We have got a crew full. Be sure to uh, tune us in this morning and you see how many can you squeeze into a table at Hardy's. Uh, Norma Christensen, who is with Middle Tennessee Medical Center, is here to, again, reminding us all week long about the third annual Parent and Child Festival to be held uh, this weekend at the SportsCon here in Murfreesboro. And uh, we're, we've been talking about a little bit about everything. We talked about uh, CPR yesterday for infants and uh, swimming lessons for toddlers and infants and uh, what anything we haven't talked about so far. I think we've covered it all in bits and pieces. Well, I think that's true in bits and pieces, and I thought maybe people might like to know that as far as the uh, the classes, now we're talking many, we've gone through this a lot of times, M yeah, how many? I, not many, many classes, uh, just maybe what times that they are going to be held, because they'll only be held once during the day. For instance, at 10.30, yesterday we were talking about the swimming lessons for mm -hmm. the little children, three months to, uh, I mean, six months to three years, that's at 10.30 in the pool area, and also at 10.30, <coughs> will be a portion on how to video your children <coughs> properly. Uh, all, some, uh, a gentleman from uh, Curtis Mathis mm -hmm. will be, in fact, the manager of Curtis Mathis will be there and showing uh, parents you know, how to do this properly so they get good videos. And then uh, uh, from Ralston's uh, Phyllis, uh, Phyllis, Priscilla, she'll love me for That's that. That's close oh, enough. That's pretty close. Priscilla Ralston will be there to talk about how to prepare your children for portraits. Then at 11.30 will be another uh, swimming demonstration of um, hydro aerobics. Mm -hmm. this is Not hydro aerobatics, no, as I said yesterday. No, whatever you said yesterday. And <clears throat> this is for the adults, and this will be in the pool area. Then at 1040 is the class on the infant and child choking and safety. Mm -hmm. Now, in between there at 11 is the fashion show with maternity fashions and infants and children's. Then uh, after that's over at uh, 12 o'clock is another demonstration in the pool area for children four and five year olds for swimming. After uh, then kind of some of these are simultaneous. They'll be going on at the same time. At 12.15 is you and your image for makeup tips and uh, skin care and body shapes and what you should wear, your dress for success. This is for men and women also. At one will be the infant and uh, care and feeding. We also then at 1.30, and I said, we were talking earlier, I said I, I should have thought on football day <coughs> that this was not the time to put this, but we have uh, for fathers only, or especially for fathers, Dr. Dixon, one of our pediatricians, is going to be here. Mm -hmm. And he will be talking about just what do you need to do to be a father, you know, just kind of what are your responsibilities, and I think the fathers would really enjoy this, and that why, that's why we said this is just this is just for the dads. Well, I'll be thinking about you as I'm sitting on the 50-yard line of the Tennessee-Auburn game. Right? I know. And, you know, I asked you yesterday <laughs> where your priorities were, <laughs> well, now and you I know. found out. <laughs> uh, Norma, we've got a lot of folks with us this morning. If someone wants to uh, uh, find out more information specifically on these classes, we've given a lot of times and a lot of different yes. things, but if there's one that's uh, stuck in their mind is something, hey, I'd like to see that, they can call uh, 849 mm -hmm. That's directly to me. And uh, we have some uh, prenatal exercise classes. They may want to watch that, see what that's about if they're pregnant. And so they can just call it 849 4502. And if they can't remember that number, just call Middle Tennessee Medical Center yes. and ask for Norma Christensen. Yes, and they will get me. They'll ring it through. Today we have a lot of folks with us. Patsy Weiler, who was with us earlier in the week here talking about uh, the big Appalachian uh, Tennessee Fall Homecoming at the Museum of Appalachia in Norris, Tennessee. This is the 10th annual. It'll be taking place, uh, what are the dates to get, Patsy? Uh, October 12th to the 15th. It'll be a Thursday through a Friday. We're going to have four big days of everything that you would have had to got the opportunity to experience uh, in the uh, fall time of the year in the mountains if you're getting ready for the winter. There will be uh, several hundred old time musicians, craftspeople, lots of good old beans and cornbread and fresh onions and fried pies. Then there will be uh, an antique engine show. So what we've done this morning is rather than me to sit here and talk and tell you about it, we've brought you an example of some of the country's outstanding white oak basket makers and also you're going to hear the uh, Tipton family and Elmer Smith give you a demonstration of some of the best old time music that you're going to hear anywhere. Now we're going to save the music to the second portion okay. if that's okay with Sophie and sure. Louise and 
and their guitar picker down there. Yeah, their guitar. <laughs> uh, but uh, last year we had the, the Woods on here with us uh, talking about, uh, and I have talked about ever since, a basket that you didn't bring this morning, that uh, berry basket. Yeah, I've yeah. tried to tell everybody. Yeah. And, uh, it's in the truck. Oh, is it? Well, I, maybe you can, uh, we can bring that in here in the second portion if, if we can. I'd like to, for Norma to see He's it. He's been and talking about that all week long. It's so the one, that, you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. The Indian berry basket, I think mm -hmm. you called it, or uh, basket anyway. Tell us, uh, you make oak baskets, right. which sounds like you get you an oak tree and carve them out, and in your own way, you and 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 the wife do. But uh, tell us a little bit about your work. Well, we go into the woods and select the white oak that we think to make the basket, and then we start from there and make the splits and whittle the ribs and the hoops, and then the hoop determines the size and the shape of the basket we're going to make, and. We weave it then from there. Now, Treble, you, you're uh, when you. It's easy to talk about it on the radio, but in, uh, I hope uh, most people will uh, try to watch this morning and and uh, take a look at uh, what we're talking about. Uh, before you move the mic, uh, Patsy, I want to talk to Treble about how do you uh, and, and maybe uh, it's she that does this, but uh, the the how do you make the white oak red blue? Is it painted? Is it dyed? Is it how well? Do you that that one right there is rich dye. Now we do some with walnut or natural, but Ritz is the Oh, prettiest. just like the old box of Ritz dye, you know? Mm, right. Mm. Just the Ritz dye. Now why do I make it so hard when it's actually... But well, it is got, hard, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be sure you got enough material to make the basket before you start it. How long have you been uh, doing this? And well, my mother and my grandmother did it, and I helped my mother weave. And so it's a family tradition. Well, yeah, Treva's great-grandmother. I remember her making baskets. You're, uh, Trevor, who, who, who we're going to talk to right now. Let's turn that microphone around here and talk to her. You've been working ever since you got here. Do you ever stop weaving? No. Do you weave much. in your sleep at night? No, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got, looks like a, either a tree brand or a case. I can't tell with the land it's there. A, it's a tree brand. It's a tree brand. Land there where you can uh, do your splits. Is that what you're using that knife for? Yes. Uh -huh. Now splits, basically what you're doing is taking white oak and splitting it out along the grain or with the grain. It has to be, I guess, uh, it can't be too old or it, it would break when you did it. How, how do you keep it oh. s small branches and use the green wood so that it'll be flexible I assume and then you begin weaving making the ribs and uh, that's a handle I know but do you what are the what are the basic parts of it? won't you point them out to us and get Robert to uh, uh, do a close-up a little bit here and, and, and tell us so that our radio audience can uh, get a little benefit out of this too well you begin with the hoop we call this the hoop of course oh, you, what I call the handle is the hoop because it does go all the way through doesn't it's it? a handle also um, and you form the basket. The basket gets the look by the way you put these ribs in. It's like framing, I guess. You make a frame and then you weave it to fill it in. And each basket is a little bit different. They have their own personality. I've always was amazed, even when I watched Tarzan and Rama of the Jungle, how they took that grass or weeds or cane or whatever and actually tied knots in it and made folds. And, and it comes out so neat. Mm -hmm. uh, if I did that, it would look like, and I don't mean this uh, ugly, it looked like a blind man did it, you know? I mean, I know that... <laughs> if you did enough, it would look better. As you did more, they would. you just get better at it. Well, it's amazing what you do, and I'll show them this one, or maybe I ought to hold this up. This, uh, I don't know if it's a ring basket or what. You could just about get a, uh, a wedding band or two in this little basket. That's you can see how small it is. You wear it on a necklace. A lot of people oh. do. And that way, if you need to hang something around your neck, you can just put it in the basket, huh? <laughs> Some people, I guess. <laughs> maybe that's, parking money. That's absolutely amazing. And, and I guess it's done just like that, except a little more tedious. Yes. Yeah, how long does it take you to make uh, one of these little baskets? I've like never that? really time that you have to make it when you feel really good get on your mark <laughs> get set no. no you can't do it like that <laughs> it's a, nesting set. Uh, a nesting set oh yeah didn't you bring those with yes. you last year uh, where you uh, I don't know why I think of Easter when you say that but uh. now, now what, is, what is a nesting set there's six basket and the biggest one is about five inches across and each one of them nests is in each other in other words, they all will they stack. All Ab right absolutely in. perfect. It's not like there's an inch on each side of one. They just slip in right under the handle. Mm -hmm. Is that you do that on purpose? 
Uh, well, a lot of people so like it, yes. Can you make the little one first, or you have to make the big one first? I think you could make either one first. I, I got a feeling you could. Yes, and then, you would, and then you would fit it in the next hoop as you made it, yes. Now, the different types of basket, does this have a specific name? It's, it's uh, certainly got a different shape to it than uh, the other baskets that we've had here on the program that you brought it, by. Yes. What is it's this It's a called? butterfly. A butterfly basket. Yes. Does it look like a butterfly? See the short it stings wings. like a bee. No. <laughs> <laughs> see the short wings on it? It looks like a butterfly. Oh, sure, sure, I can see that. If he sent you, explained it to me that way. It is very, very beautiful. Uh, now, and this this just, uh, that's not a plain basket. It doesn't have a flat bottom. And all your baskets have a, do all, are all of them very similar in that they have this, uh, no, different all, types. all different kinds. Trevor, I can't hear you. I got to have this microphone so I can hear you that now. We make different types, oblongs and egg baskets, and then we design our own baskets. And so I, different types. If I can get my co-host to help me uh, move you these out of the way, I want to bring this one in because this basket uh, that we're going to be showing, and I know this is probably a lot of fun for the folks listening on the radio, but we'll do our best to help you uh, understand what's going on here. This basket, you think, is in the neighborhood of 200 years old that someone brought to you to repair. You want to tell us the story of this basket? Well, there was a lady from Lebanon and brought it over here, and I don't know how old she was, but she was a senior citizen. She said her mother used it for a garden basket. Well, you told me earlier before we started on the show, she was a very senior citizen, didn't you? Well, yeah. I mean, he's, senior. He's being really nice, isn't he, about senior citizens? You know, when, I, when they <laughs> first started talking about senior citizens, it was 65, and now if you're 50, you can be a member of AARP. So uh, before, in another week or two, there, I'm liable to be a senior citizen. Well, there's there's citizen right here. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty bad shape when she brought it over. It even had a piece of uh, wood holding this hook to this hook and so now, I repaired it up to about somewhere in long there and then I dipped it in walnut stain and that makes it all look old. So that's how you uh, got the color to match. Mm -hmm. Now where do you get that much walnut stain? Do you uh, do you make your own just out of curiosity? Do you actually go out and... Well we just pick the walnuts up and then boil them in a big kettle and then strain it and then we dip the baskets in it. And how long will that stuff last? Forever and ever? Will it sour or do you have to do something to well, it? Well, it sours, but then <laughs> we matter. have to boil new then. Well, that is amazing. And this basket is heavy. Uh, is it? Is this kind of basket you said you helped your mother and your grandmother? Is no, this my mother made small ones. Some, about the size of a grapefruit. Now, th as heavy as this basket is, and you said it was her garden basket, if you pick very much squash or cucumbers or anything had any weight to it, you'd have to call Paul to the garden to get it back to the house, wouldn't you? Well, it is a large basket. And it's, I assume it's made out of the same materials same that material, you're using yeah, today. Same material. Uh, have you, do you give classes? Do you, do you teach people how to do this? I mean, oh, it'd be yeah. wonderful to Me share and that. Me we travel to different states and teach classes and go to conventions. I'm going to move this back over so they can see you travel. And continue. I don't know if you hear the John Campbell's Folk School in North Carolina, but I was down there in the spring, taught classes down there. Oh, no, I haven't, but there's a lot of things I haven't had of, so don't let that stop well, you from they, it's, me about it. It's a school where they teach all kinds of craft, any craft that they can get a qualified teacher to teach. While well, you can go there and take the classes. Then I believe next year we'll be going, Trevor's going, and we're going, I believe, twice next year. Um, you notice I've been, usually I'm a lot more of a cut up in the mornings than I have been this morning. The reason is, is there any particular reason why you got this big old knife in? <laughs> 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 no, nah, I just the biggest old timer I ever saw. I just wanted to show what we make a whittle of material with. Oh, is that what you do the splitting with? Mm -hmm. Split the oak out with? Yeah. Couldn't you find a big one? <laughs> well, I use smarter ones. I mean, too. I carry a little pocket knife because simply because I always did. But uh, that's an Uncle Henry. That that's even larger. Right there's one size. I, I used to get them bigger than that though. Tree, well, that's her knife. Well, I like her tree brand. You know, I probably couldn't talk her out of that. It, of course, her her material is sort of smaller than my material. <laughs> Well, yes, it is. I mean, when we're talking about a basket that weighs uh, 10 pounds empty versus one that uh, you'd have to have a, probably a gunpowder scale to uh, weigh, you are talking about some difference in size. Well, when, I, when I got back to making the baskets, well, my mother always made them a little larger than that one, and that's the size I made because I thought it took too much material to make a bigger basket, you know. Mm -hmm. And I got to making them bigger and bigger, and they don't... If you need the material, you always get it, so I make the bigger baskets now. Um, 
How long does it take to make the material or to strip out the material to make a basket that size? Well, there's no way to know. Does that go pretty fast, or is that slow work, too? Well, it's pretty fast, but if you go get a wide opening. You, if it makes splits, you make all that in splits. And then if it don't, you make that in the hoops and the ribs. And you've got a lot of the material, and it's sort of like farming. You don't count that time on a basket. Yeah. You just count the time you're actually making the basket. Trevor, uh, John Thomas is having a heart attack because I've already run over five minutes, but you're so interesting <laughs> to talk to. I hate to stop you, but well, we are going to have to take a break here. And we spend from eight hours to 40 hours. Some we spend 40 hours on one basket. Gracious. Well, I'm glad I don't have to pay you by the hour while you're sitting here. You know. <laughs> we'll be back with more of the program. Don't forget the big Grand Slam auction. Good it's morning. all uh, being put on by a lot of great sponsors who have contributed uh, all kinds of things to be auctioned off. It's next Monday night, the Grand Slam auction in Fish Fry at the MTSU Livestock Pavilion. And uh, Claude Vick is just one of the many folks who sponsors our show and is helping uh, donate a lot of things to be auctioned off. So uh, why not go by if you're a baseball fan or whether you're not and uh, thank Claude for not only making the Breakfast pl Club possible it's easy for me to say every morning but by going out and uh, supporting the grand slam auction remember claude vick is located at 320 southeast broad street in murfreesboro your ashley wood stove dealer where you save big right now and we'll be back with more of the breakfast club in just a few minutes don't go away that's so so for uh, getting back to you but we're having such a good time the clock got away from me we're going to have some more good time because it's music time in addition to crafts like uh, we've been looking at with the woods this morning. Uh, there are going to be a lot of picking and grinning up in uh, Appalachia and uh, Sophia Tipton, needless to say, is with us. Louise is here with us this morning. Louise, good morning. Tomlin, right? Tomberlin. Tomberlin. I, I, you know, I, well, how long have I known you? 15, 20 years probably? 15 anyway. And uh, I've always tried to, I was still want to make you Tipton still, you know. <laughs> I want to say Louise Tipton, I always have. It's part of the family. And uh, you got to, uh, Sophie, welcome to the program. We haven't talked talk to you this morning. I know it goes without saying that uh, everyone in the community uh, uh, offers their sympathy to you. The loss of our pal a few weeks ago. Uh, it is so good to have you on the program and out and about, and you brought you a guitar picker this morning. You're going to be singing some of the great music like we'll be singing uh, in Norris, Tennessee. Are y'all going up this year? Are y'all going to be we'll performing be there. there? We hope to perform some, but uh, we're going to enjoy it. Uh, Patsy wanted some old timers this morning, so this was well, that's all. That's why I'm here. Okay. That's why <laughs> that's we're here. That's not why you're here. That's why I'm here. But uh, we want to represent a little bit of the old timey music. Louise uh, will tell you some of the performers that will be there. Okay. At the now let's introduce the guitar player. Oh, Elmer forget. Smith. Elmer Smith is with us this morning and his lovely wife is over sitting across. She can't, we can't see her, but she's over there somewhere. And then you brought someone else with you this morning too who's over oh, with Miss Smith. Yes, uh, Miss Smith's Lorraine sister, Todd. Lorraine Todd. When we welcome her down to Hardy's to the Breakfast Club, we've all been drinking. We've about drank them out of coffee this morning. Yes. Now, uh, Louise, go ahead and tell us some of the folks who will be performing. Uh, well, just some of the folks that uh, uh, we're familiar with. You know, we've traveled with bluegrass music for a long time. And uh, uh, Jimmy Driftwood, John Hartford, uh, Fraser Moss, Jeanette and Joe Carter, Roy Cuff, Smoky Mountain Boys will be there. Uh, Robert Spicer and his dancers. Uh, Robert's been real good to help us out a lot of times. Leroy Troy started on Carl's show, you know, mm -hmm. and he'll be there. Uh, Roy Harper and uh, Red Rector, the Foster Band, Elmer Bird, just a lot of folks, and that's just a few of them. You know, it, it uh, it's sort of fun, uh, the, the three of us uh, sitting here this morning, because we used to get up and drive early, 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 yes. you know, particularly when, uh, at, I know we used to tape, as you well know, on Saturday morning, we'd do six shows, uh, right. Sunday through Friday, That's right. and at nine o'clock on Saturday morning, we all tore out and tried to do six as quick as we could, and then it started being live, and I used to meet Carl early, early in the morning. I don't remember what time, was it four o'clock, you know, five o'clock, what time? We we were meet. on at 5.30, and so, then we went back to 5. What time was I meeting him then? Probably 30? 4. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we'd ride down in, in the darkness every yes. morning and get ready and go. Uh, and it was uh, almost two years. Uh, it was some of the best, most fun I have it had was. in my lifetime. Lots of great. fun. We have a lot of bloopers from that, don't we? We do indeed. And I wish that there was some way that we could have had a camera that did nothing but show what was going on in besides the in the back. Yes. Because uh, that's... 
really where all the fun was and the fellowship and uh, the babies sleeping I know it was unbelievable <laughs> uh, and speaking of babies Christmas show was one of my favorites where all everybody brought their family and yes. uh, watching again off camera what was going on the moms trying to keep the noses clean and yeah. get kids out of the <laughs> way of the camera when we had some great times so you're gonna do some singing for us this morning uh, Mr. Smith's gonna play and and uh, you promised you'd do a, a little bit of a couple of songs all right. you said you weren't gonna do them all and no. since you're directing the show this morning you know, <laughs> <laughs> now, I get blamed for a lot of things now, Gary. <laughs> oh, you know, it's all in love. We've yes, always accused Sophie of being a uh, producer, director, writer, and uh, also the sergeant at arms. And then everything that <laughs> went wrong, it was my fault. That's right. We, everybody had to have somebody oh, to blame. Yes. What are you going to sing for us this morning? Uh, we've chosen a, a funny little song this morning, one that I remember my father singing when I was a child. And, uh, Ben, this is... Uh, advertised in uh, the Museum of, of Appalachia <laughs> and everything up there will be as it was in the old days while we'll sing a a couple of verses of this little song. Now, while y'all are singing for the folks at home, they're going to be seeing, uh, I've got uh, the brochure from oh, the, okay. the museum, and they're going to be seeing some All of the right. folks doing some of the crafts uh, while right. you're entertaining That's us. That's fine. I have a little home that I call my own. There's no place like home. And I have a little wife, she's the plague of my life. There's no place like home. When you come in tired from a hard day's work, six or seven kids will greet you with a face like dirt. And they leave half the supper on the bosom of your shirt. There's no place like home. Home, home, sweet, sweet home. There's no place like home. Oh, there's no place like home. When the baby cries out in the middle of the night, there's no place like home. And you search for castor oil without any light, there's no place like home. When you step on the end of an upturned tack, come sliding down the stairs on the middle of your back. And your wife hollers out, oh, hurry up, Jack, there's no place like home. That, that is a funny song, so how come I get so emotional when y'all sing it? Uh, you know, that's a, you, you can take a happy song and make a tearjerker out of it. Yes, so. These songs that you hear are real life. They, they tell a story. America Talking, that's what I've yes. always liked it's about country history. music, is, yes. uh, and it continues. It's changing a little bit. I from st so. Some of it's uh, not, not necessarily history, but... We don't search it, for Castro in the no, middle of the night we, anymore. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're out looking for a 15-year-old sometimes, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Things are different. Uh, what else are you going to sing for us this morning? You promised us two. Uh, oh, let's oh. Patsy. Patsy. Okay. Hi, Gary. I no, told you Sophie <laughs> was directing the show. Let Patsy I know. talk a while. No, <laughs> we just want to remind everybody that all these beautiful basket workings and the music you're here is to promote the 10th annual fall homecoming at the Museum of Appalachia. And it will be October the 12th through the 15th. Lots of good food and a lot of fun. You can call the radio station after the show for information on the tickets and plan to come up. The leaves will be in the most beautiful show of the year and it'll be a wonderful experience for the whole family. And we would ask till they, that they wait until after 8.30 to call the station. That's that way Linda will be there to right. give them the information because right, right now I think John Thomas has got it all alone over That's there. That's right. But I'm going to let them go back and uh, sing some more pretty music here. And this is, we had, John Rice had invited the uh, Tippins up to sing. Of course, at the time, um, Mr. Carl's illness was a little uncertain. So they, uh, this year, were going to go and just kind of be their guest. And hopefully, they're going to be able to get up on the stage also. Well, and then maybe we can all just rent a bus and take everybody up next year and go and have make a trip out of it. That's right. But let, I'm going to turn it back to them and enjoy some more music. And this is a small sample of four days of music on two stages that will be going on during the homecoming. Okay. Well, what are we going to hear now, Soph? 
Or Louise, who's the Louise. spokesperson? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a song that reminds us of home. Uh, back when we lived in cabins. Now, I did. Yes, we <laughs> Two did. Two rooms. Yes. When I was uh, small. So. And now Louise suffers from mansion fever. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not hardly. Talking about cabins, Gary, you'll see every kind of cabin imaginable there, and that's how the museum began, was in the old General Bunch cabin. So this all fits right in with the homecoming. We again want to invite everybody up for the 12th and 15th. Okay. It's called Land Where No Cabins Fall. As my mind wanders back to the quaint little shack where in childhood I used to play. There with mother and dad, we were happy and glad as we wild the sweet moments away. We would all kneel in prayer and in reverence there we would praise our Redeemer above. Now in silence I pine for that old home of mine, and I long for that mother's love. I'd like to go, like to go back to the quaint little town shack. Yes, I'd like to spend the sweet day where in childhood. childhood sweet play I can still hear those voices speak they're calling me back to the quaint little shack where the circle will never more meet and some glad happy day up in heaven they say we shall meet them again one and all they're in mansions so bright where they'll never come night in the land where no cabins fall. I'd like to go back, to go back to the quaint little tumble down shack. Yes, I would like to spend the day where in childhood I used to play. Enough. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, uh, it all happens. That we're talking two weekends from this weekend. Uh, actually, it starts on a Thursday. Four big days. Uh, if for people who want to know, uh, there are plenty of these brochures. Do we have brochures at the station? Yes. Somebody wants to come and pick them up. There are brochures at the station, and for people to get a general idea, Norris, Tennessee, is located 16 miles north of Knoxville on Interstate 75. As I said, right in the heart of the uh, Smokies and the Appalachians and the foliage is going to be turning and Jack Frost is going to be in the air and all these talented people are going to be there and we're going to have a wonderful time. Just out of curiosity, the last time I was up that way, uh, I was, well, my brother was still in diapers and I'm four years older than he is, so that gives you an idea how long it's been since I've been to Norris, Did you Tennessee. you go into Model T? No. Uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was a 56 Dodge, no, actually. But it it might have been a 54 Plymouth. I don't remember. But uh, yeah. how far is this from Norris Dam? That's what I remember about uh, that particular oh, area. five minutes at that long. It's just, uh, in fact, there will be some people will be actually staying in the cabins at Norris Dam. So there will be uh, the Norris Dam State Park. Big, Big Ridge State Park is nearby. And then on down to Caribou is another beautiful state park, Cove Lake. And so... Um, well, you've got you Clinton and Oak Ridge yeah. and Knoxville and lots of things, places you can People stay People could actually make this a whole week's fall vacation and make this the highlight of it. And so uh, if you get tired of music and good food and crafts, which is hard for me to understand, there's a lot in the air you can do also. And I do want to remind them something from when I was four or five years old. When you I'm go through Copper nice. Hill and Ducktown, slow down because it's speed trap. That's right. My daddy got a ticket. It's the only reason I told him. I'll never forget that. I thought daddy was gone to jail, you know, because he got a speeding ticket. But uh, it all takes place. And uh, for those who want information, this even has a map on it to show you how to That's get right. there. It has a list of, uh, all, I mean, gee whiz, everything you'd ever want to know, including how much it costs to go. Uh, as uh, Louise was telling us, many of the uh, uh, folks who will be... Uh, 
performing. John Harper, did you mention John Harper? I yes. guess you did. Yeah, lots of folks. I mean, page after page after page yes. of uh, folks who will be performing, and then all of the craftsmen mm -hmm. like Mr. Wood who will be up there mm -hmm. to show you how you do it and uh, mm -hmm. all that kind of thing. Gary, also, we're going to have a book and author tent of Southern authors, and Alex Haley, who just lives a few miles from the museum, will be there Saturday and Sunday along with several other outstanding authors, including the uh, gentleman that wrote the Andy Griffith's story, and uh, Sam Venerable, who's a columnist for the Knoxville papers, and, and on and on and on. Uh, we could just rattle on forever. But I, no, my, we can't. We're out of time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. Go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. You finish your thought. But I was just going to say, for people who uh, want to call the radio station and hurry up and get the request in the mail, they can receive a 20% discount on their tickets received by October the 1st, and there is a four-day adult ticket for $20, which makes it $5 for all day from... Uh, sun up the sunset of a good time and like you said you couldn't even see a fragment of dolly at dolly land for for that kind of money true <laughs> and uh, it, it's amazing it, you the names you've mentioned now here's travel who uses the bark of a tree and alex haley who uses the roots that's so right we'll use the whole tree in uh, norris tennessee yeah. sophie louise miss smith thank you for coming and picking and being with us this morning and thank you for the, our Ms. Smith and her sister's name is Lorene for being with us. Norma, we'll, we'll be here tomorrow. We're going to be talking all day long about uh, the uh, at third annual Parent and Child Festival, which is taking place this weekend, uh, which is in the immediate future. We're talking a couple of weeks away for the uh, festival at Appalachia, the museum up there. Uh, Tomorrow, Judith Minshew, who is the image consultant, you alluded to the image uh, program that you'll be having earlier, and uh, Priscilla Ralston will also be with us tomorrow, talking about infant and children's portraits and how to get them ready and maybe cut down on the fights and the crying and the tears all the and all the stuff that, uh, that goes along with trying to get right. your picture taken in the studio. It never fails. Everybody's perfect until you uh, get you want to take in front picture? of the lens oh, and then right. the tears cloud up. As a matter of fact, we've got a couple of pictures at home of uh, either myself or my brother making a total you-know-what out of ourselves in front of a <laughs> professional photographer. Everybody needs a rubber ducky. Well, I'll remind everybody that this weekend also uh, from uh, 10 a.m. until noon uh, in for the American Cancer Society that the uh, Murfreesboro JCs is having a rubber duck race. Now, how they ever came up with this, I don't know, but they're going to be uh, doing it. If you want to uh, adopt a duck, you can go to uh, Bell Jewelers, Kmart, in Murfreesboro, and Smyrna, Mega Video, Mid-South Bank, uh, First American Bank, Union Planners Bank, First City Bank, and Calvary Bank, and adopt a duck for $5, and then they're going to go out at uh, uh, the Indian Hills Country Club and, and race ducks on the river, so uh, <laughs> rubber ducks. That, that so, should be interesting. It will indeed. Something, uh, a sight to see. So there's lots to do this weekend. We hope that everyone will join us tomorrow morning and uh, we'll be uh, wrapping up and talking more and getting into more detail about the times. If you're interested in a particular uh, event, then be sure to tune in tomorrow morning and we'll get everything lined up and ready for the weekend. Right. And join us this morning at 8.30, tonight at 7.05 for a look at the Breakfast Club. Again, thanks to our guest. Patsy, thank you very much. Thank you, we appreciate you Spend coming down. Spend the morning down. with a handsome man like you again. Lion will get you everywhere, darling. That's right. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's our show. Thanks again to John Tom because I know we've run over on you this morning, pal, and uh, we'll try to do better in the morning. That's our program. Have a nice rest of the day. Wear your seatbelt, and if you see anybody I know, tell them hi for me, will you? Bye for now. <laughs>